When I started milling with this machine, I wanted one of these so bad. So let me show you how I made this. Okay, so essentially what I've got here is um, an L-shaped plate made of 316 steel that bolts onto the head of my mill in existing holes that were there where the handle was to crank this the head of the mill upwards and downwards. So I didn't have to tap any new holes, I just used existing holes and the bolts. Then afterwards, you know, I wanted something that was compact and uh, unobtrusive. So that's about as good as I could do with the plan that I had. So let me show you what's inside. Let's start by taking these little bolts off that retain the cover. Part my arms. Okay, now, in here, this particular bolt here is uh, actually holding the actual drill mechanism that's inside. It's actually an industrial drill. And I've tapped a hole in it and uh, so it actually locks the drill to this steel plate. So now it'll come off partially, actually completely, there we are. So the drill part is out. And okay, so here you go. Here's a drill, you know, the, the motor part of it. And I've shortened a, uh, this is this is a socket that I've used to engage the nut, and I made a shortened uh, shaft to engage with the socket. So let's take that apart a little further. Okay, there's a couple of things that are important to note here, and. Um, <laughs> and modifications which were a little bit uh, nerve-wracking for me actually. Uh, one of the things that I had to do is cut the shaft, the original shaft, a little shorter than it was. It came out about, you know, perhaps an inch and a half, an inch and a half further than it is currently. And, uh, and then what I did is I used a die of the appropriate size and I made threads so that I could put a nut on. Uh, and the choice of nut was a little bit happenstance. So a little while ago, I did a job for a guy's sailboat where the shaft on his inboard needed a new nut. And uh, I got a whole bunch of these stainless steel nuts. And as you can see, the original uh, size is bigger so I actually had to turn down the, the outside diameter, um, you know, with my mill. These are stainless steel. So I got a bunch of these, so I might as well use them up, I thought. So I used the same procedure uh, here and I turned it that, down the outside diameter to fit a socket that I could um, devote to this particular application permanently. <laughs> so that's what I did. And uh, once I threaded that on, uh, I, uh, let's see here. I applied some Loctite to it and it's not going anywhere, trust me. So, and so now uh, the whole thing is engaged by the drill, goes up and down. Now when you look at this here, uh, this plate is 3 16ths and it sticks out approximately 10 inches long. Now, why did I pick that length? Well, it's basically the length of the drill uh, after I was able to reduce its, its length 
as much as possible. Uh, and then uh, I looked at, you know, I wanted this to be easy to put on, easy to take off if I needed to uh, do any repairs or whatnot. All right, so let's go to the bench and I'll show you what I did with the drill. Okay, so here you see the interior of that box that I made. And uh, all it is, is it's a normal drill, electric drill. So quite simply, it comes off and it just slides out and then you are. There's the drill itself. And as you can see, I took off the back handle. I extended some wires. But essentially, it is exactly as it was before. So let me show you what I did here. Normal socket. Right? Turns out it's a 15 16 but it could be anything that you have. In my case, it had to be big enough to thread onto that shaft for the mill, and yet small enough that I could fit um, a socket that I had. So you can see here the, um, the uh, attachment for the socket. I just took a regular one, chopped it to length, so that be make, making the whole mechanism as short as possible for me. Um, this particular drill is a, I believe it's a Craftsman 2600. Let me show you the specs. There you are. So it's quite powerful. Um, no problem at all. It'll last. It's lasted me 30 years already. So I'm sure it'll last long enough. Um, inside the case, focus a little bit on that. Of course, here we have the uh, the the actual trigger, which came. I saw no need to change any of that stuff. It works perfectly. So why recreate the wheel? So I use that uh, variable speed variable speed. Um, switch because it's kind of nice no i don't want it to go full tilt and of course the directional switch up and down just like that so that's it there's nothing complicated to this now let's look inside as you can see i've got the switches that were in the drill and i've got them epoxied to the case so I was able to measure where I wanted it. I looked at the, the appropriate spacing, the length, of, and then based on that, I, I chose to extend the wiring to the appropriate length. And then the power comes in from the back, so it's not unsightly. Okay. Here's the cable that goes to the outlet. Put a couple of of uh, tie wraps to keep it in place and that's all there is to it so the epoxy i use the professional epoxy you could use probably any epoxy it'll be strong enough to hold it in place just make sure that you let it set first and uh there i also have a couple of pads in there pardon me and and the reason for that is because initially I had designed this to put a metal strap around the drill itself. But, one, but once you do that, I couldn't, uh, you know, I couldn't tighten the straps down uh, simply because the drill had to be in there and the whole thing had to slide in place. So it, it was uh, logistically, it was not possible. So let's put it back together real quick. First. Let me zoom out. There we are. First, we'll put the socket back on. Just normal socket, nice and tight. Slide the drill back in place. And it's as simple as that. And, uh, you know, the, the final positioning 
will be done at the mill. Put these little foam pads in. But really, I mean, those are just stabilizers. What's really gonna hold it down is the bolt that I showed you earlier that goes through that metal plate and it'll screw right into this here. This is a fairly heavy plastic, so and it's solid and that bolt engages nicely. Other than that, my friends, there's truly not much. Uh, I did make sure to do some cable management. I'm a bit anal that way. So I put Pyra, you know, some thigh straps and that's it. So you've seen how it goes back in place or because out it came out and that's exactly the way it'll uh, go back in its place. Now, something that's interesting is that as it goes up and down, I have a, a vertical head stabilizer on my mill and there is no sideways movement now on uh, when I lift or lower the head to do and then at mill changes or whether it be for uh, drilling operations. So having one of these, pretty important. It's, it's a full day's work to get it done. If you have a drill, well worth sacrificing it to do this. If you don't, you can get them for about 25, 30 bucks. And there again, it's a win because if you buy the uh, mechanism, the motor, all the done up for you it's about 560 bucks us so make yourself one of these all right i hope you enjoyed the video folks take care and uh, please like and subscribe and leave me some comments thanks